There have been a ton of changes to the app building process by everything that's happening with AI. And oftentimes we find ourselves focused on what the building experience is like. But AI app builders are also starting to put pressure on the traditional pricing models that app builders have gone with historically. And in this video, we're going to talk about how some of these changes to pricing models can actually really benefit you as a customer. So first, let's talk about the most prolific method of charging for software, which historically has been charging for every single user who utilizes your application. This user-based pricing, we still see in applications like Airtable. So if you have a single user, you'd pay $20 a month. If you have 100 users, you'd pay 100 times $20 per month. And historically, that was seen as a way that you can tie the price of the software to the value that is being created by the business who's actually using the software. Because as that company grows and adds headcount, then there are more people benefiting from that software. But as we've seen with advancements in AI and a lot of the layoffs that are happening in tech, you might not necessarily need the same number of people to get the same job done. That's where this leaves some people questioning if per-user licensing still makes sense. Now, other companies such as Softer have tweaked their pricing model to not focus on each individual user paying, but instead they bundle features and then bundle or create buckets of different users. That means that there are caps on the number of users that you can have on a given plan, but typically the per-user pricing is significantly lower. And that's where Softer initially created a lot of value for their customers was by people evaluating, hey, do I really want to pay each user license on Airtable, or do I want to pay for this bucket of users where it's significantly less expensive? Now, other companies like NoLoco and Glide took a similar approach, but with a slight tweak. Rather than pricing on a fixed bucket of users, they realized that there are some of their consumers who have a fluctuating number of users who actually log into the platform. And so they decided to price based on the number of people who actually log into your application in a given month rather than just on the number of users in general. So for companies who have a client portal where their end customers only log in once a quarter, then they don't have to bill for every single user every single month. Now, a totally different way to price is based on usage or consumption. If you go to the Bubble website, this looks entirely different from a lot of the other software vendors. They're charging almost exclusively by these workload units. Now, this can be valuable for some companies because you're really only paying for what you use. The more popular your app is, the more it's going to cost you. The less popular your app is, the less it's going to cost you. But the problem here is that workload units mean a lot of different things. It can be loading page HTML or interacting with your database or any number of different activity that still all use these one set of units. And that can be confusing because if you're not already deeply invested in the bubble ecosystem, how are you supposed to know how many of these workload units you really need? Now with platforms like Zapier, they still go based on usage, but instead of having all of these different things that you're being evaluated on for usage, they're really talking about tasks. And tasks in Zapier are really just integrated actions. How many times do you call out to another system? Or how many times do you pull in information? And so it's much easier to be able to calculate the value of those tasks. Now, about a year ago, Zapier made a big splash because they started creating their own tables, their own backend database. And they were creating their own interfaces, their own front end as well. And those were typically charged as upsells. You'd pay an additional fee for that on top of the tasks that you were utilizing. But now Zapier's had a huge pricing update where their tables or their database, as well as their interfaces, the front end, are included basically for free, or I guess they're included within the core plan itself. And that means now Zapier starts to go more head to head with an Airtable directly. Airtable's charging you that per user fee Zapier is really just charging you for those integrated actions, those tasks, and they're just kind of giving you the rest of that platform. So it's these kind of changes that I think are really helping to evolve the landscape of pricing changes. The other change that's really making a huge impact on the pricing landscape is AI app builders. So I'm showing Zite as an example because Zite is really focused on internal app builders, much like many of the other platforms we've talked about today are as well. But Zite is charging you purely for the build process, the actual messages, the prompts that you're putting into their AI tool to be able to build your application. So that means they're not charging based on users, 
They're not charging based on workflow executions or API calls, and they will charge for advanced database usage, but in general, the database is included as well. So here you have AI app builders that are going a totally different direction than we've seen with many of the traditional app builders. Now, one thing that I'll point out that you hear all over the place on LinkedIn is about outcomes-based pricing. Salesforce and other big companies like to push this narrative of, hey, we're going to really align with our customers by charging based on outcomes. And I used to work at a chatbot company that built customer support agents. Now, customer support is this perfect area where you can charge based on outcomes because if you have a whole bunch of tickets that come in and you close 80% of those tickets automatically with your agent and then you see the value of those tickets without having to go through to a human, then you can say, okay, here's how much we're going to charge you for that. But when it comes to a CRM, are you actually giving the CRM credit for closing your deals? Probably not. There's a lot of vendors who want to claim it was because of their platform that you closed that deal. And then if you extrapolate it to these app builders, you're really not having your values aligned. How successful your app is or how effective it is for your internal team really isn't aligned well with the actual build process for the app itself. So I don't think we're really going to see this outcome-based pricing when it comes to app building. But that being said, now you as a consumer, whether you're a business or a builder, you have the smattering of options to choose from for what works best for you. So if your CFO or finance team wants predictability, you still have options that are focused on users or buckets of users. They'll be able to reliably predict the spend of software based on the number of people on your team or in your company. But if you're focused on price efficiency and you're fine with fluctuation, you know that your AI usage might go up or down, then there might be other models that are more cost effective for you than the traditional per user licensing. I hope this is helpful to see how the landscape is shifting I'd love to hear in the comments below what model is ideal for you as you're purchasing software. If you have any questions about your own automation and app building, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free consultations.